My name is Robinson. I was named after Jackie Robinson. My dad told me the name Robinson is a strong and powerful name. The name represented a true role model. Jackie overcame many challenges and broke the racial color barrier, which allows me to be treated with equal rights. I didn't have an easy start to life, but I overcame many challenges and looked up to Jackie Robinson. My dad had the privilege of meeting and corresponding with Jackie's wife, Rachel Robinson, on a couple occasions. Rachel wrote my dad's students about the struggles her and Jackie faced. She wrote, It is true that in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, Jack and I were forced to manage difficult circumstances in our struggle for equal opportunities. However, we also had the hopeful experience of living through a period of critical social change. It strengthened us. I want to find out more about the man who inspired my name. I invited three of my friends to join me on a journey to learn more. As middle school students and athletes in Northern Indiana, we wanted to find out how Jackie's life had affected our own. It is well known that Jackie Robinson broke the racial barrier of segregated sports by playing baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. But we learned through our research it was so much bigger than that. Jackie Robinson was born on January 31, 1919, in Georgia. When he was six months old, Robinson's father left the family. Desperate, his mom moved to a white neighborhood in California to be closer to family. Robinson was verbally abused by both white adults and white children because he was black. Some children even threw rocks at him. Robinson turned to sports to escape racism and became an outstanding high school athlete. He continued his sports life at UCLA. He played football, baseball, basketball, and track. In 1942, Jackie Robinson was drafted into the military to a segregated cavalry unit in Kansas. He fought many moments of discrimination during his time in the military and earned his way up to second lieutenant. In 1945, Robinson signed with the Kansas City Monarchs of the Negro Leagues. However, Ranch Rickey, a white executive with the Brooklyn Dodgers, wanted to end segregation in Major League Baseball. Robinson and Ricky had the goal of breaking the color barrier in baseball. Ricky thought Robinson would be the right man for the job because of his strength and faith. Mr. Ricky signed Robinson with the Montreal Royals, a minor league team, in 1946. Robinson was on his way to breaking segregation in baseball. He played one season for the Montreal Royals before being called up to the majors. He played his first game for the Brooklyn Dodgers in April of 1947. This caused an uproar of angry protest amongst racist fans. Even though he encountered racism from fans, he hit a batting average of 297 and he stole more bases than anyone else in the league. Robinson, the first African American to play Major League Baseball, broke a racial barrier. Although he broke the integration barrier, racial insults from fans and opposing teams continued. Worse yet, some of his own teammates were against him, but he was determined. Some of his teammates, such as Pee Wee Reese and Carl Erskine, came alongside Jackie. They supported him and became his friends. We learned that Carl Erskine was still alive and lived just two hours away from us. We contacted him and he invited us to visit him in Anderson, Indiana. We loaded up a van and took a road trip to continue our research with this once in a lifetime opportunity. So Mr. Erskine, how did you meet Jackie? Well, I was a minor league player at Fort Worth, Texas, which is a double A, and that's an affiliate of the Dodgers. In the spring of 1948, the big team, the Dodger team, came to play at a game at Fort Worth, Texas. So I pitched five innings that day, and when the game was over, uh, a voice said, where's Erskine? And it was Jackie Robinson, <laughs> and he had come across the field from the Dodger dugout and asked for me by name. I didn't know Jackie, so I stepped out of the dugout, shook hands with him, and he said, young man, I hit against you twice today. 
you're not going to be in this league very long. I think mid-July, uh, I'd won 15 games at uh, Fort Worth, so they called me to the Dodgers. And Jackie was the first guy to my locker. And he said, I, I told you you couldn't miss. <laughs> so that's how we met, and then we became not only teammates for nine seasons, but we became close friends. I never thought that baseball would ever have a bigger name than Babe Ruth. Over many, many, many decades, Babe Ruth has been the single most talked about, famous uh, baseball player. Mm -hmm. But that was all about baseball. Today, Jackie Robinson's name is bigger mm -hmm. than Babe Ruth because he impacted society, not just beat everybody mm -hmm. by hitting home runs. How do you think Jackie broke barriers? Martin Luther King had a great run as a civil rights uh, leader. He gives Jackie credit for breaking the barrier 10 years before Martin Luther King actually began his marches and his mm -hmm. efforts for civil rights. Martin Luther King often referred to Jackie as taking the first steps that were necessary for civil rights. So there was really a national impact in what Jackie did uh, t t through Mr. Rickey's guidance. And uh, so we see the result now, some 60 years later. Jackie and Carlos Dodgers won the World Series against the New York Yankees in 1955. Jackie played for the Dodgers two more seasons and retired in 1957. Dr. Martin Luther King spoke about Robinson's impact in one of his speeches in 1962. Two weeks later, he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. A life is not important except for its impact on other lives was engraved on his tombstone when he passed away in 1972. Jackie's legacy will live on forever in baseball and as a face for civil equality. He has impacted many people around the world including a local civil rights pioneer that we found in our own community. Mrs. Marsha Cook was the first African-American teacher in our school system in 1967. She faced segregation throughout her life and boldly stepped into a school system of all white teachers. But her family and faith, as well as inspiration from people like Jackie Robinson and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave her the strength to make a difference in her corner of the world. How do you think you and Jackie are alike? I think overcoming the social injustices really sticks in my mind a lot because he had to do that and so did I. We were pioneers in those areas and it wasn't always easy. There were lots of challenges, but we didn't give up. We kept going forward. He didn't give up and he kept doing so many things for not just his area where he lived, but in the nation and in the world, many people recognize Jackie Robinson. How did Jackie's story inspire you as a civil rights pioneer in your hometown? He was, he was in charge of breaking the barrier as a baseball player, and I was breaking the barrier in a small town. So that inspiration helped you to have the mindset that this needed to be different. So I was not on a national stage, I was on a small stage, but I could do some of the same things, one person at a time. There are so many things that you can do as a person. It don't, you don't have to be on the national stage to do that. But if you use the guidelines that these people followed, nonviolent, being gentle, being kind, with a smile, you can make a lot of progress. You'll be like a star in your own area. I am Robinson Hoffer. I am Caleb Duell. I am Wyatt Stapleton. I am Finn Bailey. Thanks to the inspiration of the people who came before us, together, 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 we are committed to continue breaking barriers in our community.